I am looking for Stoneboy. All right, all right, all hey, right, you. all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> What's up? What's up, my bro? Bim, they've been saying bim, bim, bim from the jump. Yes, I bim to the word. <laughs> you know, we are awakening our spirits to wake up right now and join us on this live right now, you know. 100%. Africa to the world, so we say, you know, <laughs> to the yes, world and back. Let me even and introduce beyond. you properly because you know, you know, when the big men enter, we've got to give them a proper intro. So, right now, we have a Quick. pioneer, multi award winning international collaborator, one of the leaders of the sound Afrobeats dance who does it all, a visionary, I'll say, hit maker as well. <laughs> Stone boy in the live. Drop your claps in the live. Thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> How you doing, my bro? Yo, I'm fine, bro. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I've been watching the interviews that you've been granting, you know, with other other people, other amazing people. And I must commend you for that. No, no problem at all. Thank you for joining us as well. Where are you Come yeah, on, man. I'm right in uh in Agana, in Accra. Yeah, in Accra, <laughs> <laughs> in Accra Ghana, right now, and oh, I'm oh. in I'm a ghetto. I talk to you right now, you know. Okay, okay, okay. And it's only right that people that are tuned in now that may not have seen you for the first time, what yeah. was your story from the beginning? Where was you? Where was you born? Where did you grow up? Um, I was born. I like a, I was born in 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 a, uh, in, in in Ghana in a Simon. Literally, I grew up in Ashaiman as well, and I schooled in Ashaiman. Went on to you know um, secondary school in Tema, and mm. then still all within Accra. So I've got I got my schooling in Accra, my upbringing in Accra, and that's it. You know, to, to for keep a long story. Uh, you know, for people that haven't been to Ghana before, how can you explain what Ghana is? What is Ghana? Who is Ghana? Ghana is a mother, you know. Ghana is a she. I remember in class they they say uh, our motherland. So we, I asked the question, why she, why is it not our fatherland? I still don't know why that though. I I don't know why, but Ghana is a mother. If you ask me who Ghana is, and Ghana I think is a is a home of all, all people, you know, mm. all black, white, blue, purple, or green, you know, yellow, and everybody. But it is a black country, you know. It's an African country. And Ghana, they say, is a gateway to Africa, if you ask me. Really? Yeah. yeah, man. And because in the end, we all know that the first slave ship left Ghana, from um, yeah, left the, the, the coast of Ghana to, 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 to the Americas. So, you know, that must have a thing to tell you that. And the first sub-Saharan country, I mean, the first country in Africa to gain independence by Kwame Nkrumah, your history tells you. And Kwame Nkrumah mm. as well is a champion and a pioneer of the African unity movement. So Ghana has always been and shall always be a part of the story when Africa comes to play. Yeah. It used to be called the Gold Coast. So, yeah, that's it. And what about Ghana is in you? So when people get to know Stoneboy, what is the influence in Stoneboy from Ghana? Uh, what about Ghana is in me is, um, yeah, that's right, because Ghana was born in me. Um, Ghana is a piece of the, the bigger pie, which is Africa, you know. So Africa is indeed born in me as well. So when I see my brothers from the north, east, south, and west, and central, I know we're all one people. When I see my brothers in the diaspora, you know, all over the world, I know we're all one people. Once we can identify each other, you know, with the color of our skin and beyond that, knowing that we're all humans, you know, so I can go on and on, you know, and extend it, but the long and short of it is that the part of Ghana that is born inside of me makes me know that I'm black first and foremost, and I have to represent and welcome every race, every form of people anywhere in the world. Yeah. Nice one. And lastly, yeah, on Ghana, what is the taste of Ghana? What's your favorite local food? Yeah, yeah <laughs> my favorite local food would be um, uh, you see beans, yeah, beans and plantain. 
Vincent Plantain. Okay. Yeah, man. That's you all the way through. They, they call it. They call it Gobe. Gobe. Uh, uh, and then uh, 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 that's it. They call it Gobe. That's the you know. Okay. The most okay. popular name that it has. So. But everyone everything in the Gobe, live, everybody knows. They know what you're talking about, yeah. Mm. Everyone that's in the live, make sure you ask your questions in the question box, yeah. I'm gonna be getting to the yeah. questions as well. But Stoneboy, when does the music start for you? Um, music has been inborn from time, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I began to express it right when I came out of my mom's womb. Still, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. to be deep. I'm not trying to say stories because the first cry you cry is a sound, is a melody, you know. Mm. Yeah, and so, I mean, growing up, I think the melody stuck with me, and then I have to, you know, always doing something music, always finding where the sound is, finding where the melody is, finding where the drum beat is to, to also be a part of. So that's how it really began mm. for me through the church process, all through the school process, and you know, now I'm living the music. Yeah, man. Mm. And who the artists that you was first listening to? Um, the first artist that I listened to was music. <laughs> 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 yeah, that artist was called music, yeah. And then um, yeah, some other then then the other artists also like reggae yeah, artists, yeah, dancehall yeah. artists. Oh yeah, reggae artists, dancehall artists, African music artists, Afro beats artists, you know, and. Mm. All music, literally, I told you, it's music first and then every other sound I listen to. But what inspired me the most, what inspired me the most is reggae and dancehall, you know. Really? Because I, I, yeah, I could find myself, you know, connected to the reggae more, 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 and more. And it definitely, I've had the, the African foundation already that mm -hmm. you can't take away from me because even so, you know, it is a, is a bedrock upon which I think we're getting all other forms of chain of music, you know, are built. So, you know, all these things inspire me. What all was these. the message in reggae that was hooking you? Uh, the fact is that at the point when I could write a line or two, I realized that if I if I made a mistake and I wrote anything kind of bad man type or kind of girly or kind of stuff, my I mean, I, I'm going to be disowned. You know, I'm gonna be a homeless child, <laughs> so I had to, I had to write the right ones. You know, because from the church background, all up onto loving reggae music, and my father would play a couple of reggae music. So I knew when I began to write music, it was reggae music or writing conscious lyrics that came to me first and foremost. So I remember writing the first song in primary school, mm. where I was writing about AIDS, and I had like a group that I formed to sing about that. So I was drawn to the conscious music. music. Yeah. Therefore, the form, the only genre of music that would help me to express my consciousness as the type of line that I want to do is reggae music. You know, you know. Mm. So that was it. At the time that I was, I was able to write. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know. So. And what art, what artists? What reggae artists was you listening to at that time? Yeah, at that time, everybody listened to Buju Banting, with, you know, and Bob Marley and mm -hmm. Burning Spear and Peter Thought, Anthony B, Sizzler, Kippleton, um, um, Gregory Isaacs, um, 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 there's a couple, Rian Marshall, um, 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 Stephen McGregor, and um, lots, lots of these, these, these great reggae artists, you know, and Morgan Heritage. Mm -hmm. Lots of them at the time that I you know these ones, all of these superstars, Bounty Killer, you know, on the dancer side, literally. Mm -hmm. But you know, they will do a reggae song here and there, you know, because this is between 2004, you know, from 2004 yeah. when I was in like um, senior high school one. I was, I mean, many of you could cry and I could write music and all of that. So those were my inspirations, my heavy inspirations were from that school of, 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 of artists. You know, from Vibes Cartel to all of them and them, you know, Sean Paul, Beanie Man, you know, across the whole... The whole yeah. swing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's a wide range. So at this time, mm -hmm. are you forming the vision for your career? Exactly. What was the vision for your career? The vision was straight away after I had uh, found myself studying and mastering the dancehall, patois, reggae kind of vibe, you know, um... 
I decided to see what I can do differently or what I can add to this whole thing. Because if it came to dancehall or reggae, I think Jamaicans named it and Jamaicans brought that to the world. And if I was going to excel, I could, but I may, I may not be able to go further than a Jamaican who knows what they have, um, who they have, um, 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 what they have created, the musical yeah. genre that they have created. So listen to what I did. I also realized that I'm an African, I'm a Ghanaian, and there are a lot of um, other influences and other inbuilt, you know, capacities that we, we, we had, you know, that we are, was unique to us. Mm. So this is what I decided to merge Afrobeat and dancehall and call it Afro dancehall. So I'll be able to express myself in my local style as well with everything that inspires me from here as an African. Mm -hmm. And then with a study of the reggae and dancehall also, which give me the platform to express my form of, 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 of art. Mm. So then here, 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 here goes the reggae. Here goes the Afro dancehall kid from Ghana. So I've been preaching that African dance or Afro dance or Afro beats plus dance for yeah. a very long time. Yeah. So was there any was there any blueprint before you in Ghana? Was anyone doing the merge of the two? Yes, definitely so. Um, the merge of the two was in existence, but I also came to add it up and probably formed out the Afro dance on name because yeah. before then there was no name to it like that as I would have named it, you know. So um, you had great, great people like Rocky Dawuni who did reggae music strictly. You had um, people like um, Sonny Bali, Yogi Dogi, Terry Bone, Chaka. Um, um, not in a specific order anyway, but Samini as well took it to yeah. the next level from the times, you know, and um, um, Borax. You find people like uh, uh, Banuni, uh, that's your, that's Yogi Dogi. Um, uh, where the certificate, Nuni, Yenyan in Tendayenko, that's Borax for you. Yeah, so yeah, people, yeah. Hardly, people hardly speak about him, but he also made a huge imprint around that, um, that time when Daddy Lumba put him on a song. So these are people who have, you know, preceded the whole vibe yeah. to have gotten us on, on that uh, level. So also, Come in hard and add up what we have to add. And I think, lastly, as it lays on me right now, I'm playing my role the best that I can. I've also inspired a lot of, you know, no. people to know that we can do it. Yeah. yeah, and we can do it and still give big ups to those who have inspired us or showed us the light. Yeah. 100%. And how do you feel about Afrobeats today in 2020? What's the influence around the world? How are you Are you happy with where the genre is right now? Yeah, man, I'm happy about where the genre is right now as Afrobeat. Um, it's, it's, I think uh, I, 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 um, if you talk about um, Afrobeats now, it is a combination of a variety of everything across the world, you know, coming from Africa. That's how I see it because people have, I mean, music on its own is, is universal and allows diversity. So you find out that it's beautiful now where we stand that, you know, people are coming in from all walks of life, you know, creating and merging and expanding the Afro beats that we have and giving us beautiful sounds. Most definitely Ghana is a champion at that because <laughs> most of the sounds, the Afro beat sound and some of the, the, the most dominant mm -hmm. things, you know, where we, we have been pioneering. So, yeah, man. Who are your favorite Afrobeats artists? Who are your favorite first Ghanaian Afrobeats artists today and then mm. internationally today? So Ghanaian first. Um, now even put UK in there as well. Oh no, I won't put UK. Ghana and internationally. Who are your favorite? Ghanaian Afrobeat artists right now is myself, you know? The, apart from yourself. Apart from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's I should have said that before. <laughs> I, I mean, apart from myself, I undoubtedly, I got an Afrobeat artist. I will go for R2Bs. Okay. You know, R2Bs is my, they're my favorite, favorite Ghanaian Afrobeat, Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. And now I like seeing. And then definitely there goes the Kim Promises, the Kiddies. The, yeah. You know, and there are the singers, singers, the Kwame Eugenes, you know, they're lining up the singing thing proper. So you put them on that, you know. Um, um, 
this is where the confusion is. When you when you say Afrobeat, you hardly rappers hardly come to mind. Mm. You know, you know, it's mainly melody. Beat, Af- when you say Afrobeat, it's mainly yeah. When you, yeah, when you say Afrobeat artists, rappers hardly come to mind. But I don't know. I have to still mention the likes of Sarkozy, who you know, hundred percent is still here. Are some songs that's churning out on that level. Ponobium, you know them there. Um, you know, all these among them, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course, your album, your latest album is out now, yeah. And I thought the title was very interesting, just in me reading up about it. And I thought yeah. I wanted to tell the story. So, what's the name of the album and why is the title significant? Yeah, the name of the album is Can you pronounce it? Ang- Angolo? Angola? Angola? <laughs> <laughs> Umos, Umos. Angola? Am I correct? But you tried anyway. Um, yes. Which part of Africa do you come from? Now? Ghana. Oh, and yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I will yeah, then I will say I'm gonna. Ah, nah, I don't know that. Ah, you need my one guy, Jansi. No, I've been talking to my parents all day. Ah, uh, you, my you just downstairs. She's laughing. Oh, she's laughing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Aha! <laughs> you see, now you're put on the edge. So you think? Yeah. Um, uh, I think you're from Asante, uh, right? No, Tema. Tema. Yeah. Tema, they send you your crew. Community and 18. For, Tema and Cranfone, they are. Community 18 and Cranfone, they are on Zaria. Yeah, a little oh. bit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get what I'm saying. <laughs> where, but where today. are you from? Which part? So you're from, yeah, Um. I mean, your tribe, your tribe. I'm not trying to tribalize anything over here, but I want to know where you're from in Ghana. Kumasi. Kumasi, my dad's gone. No. Oh, your dad is gone. So, okay, your mom is yeah. free. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah gone. Yeah, so you're okay, cool. I'm a bit yeah. of everything, and I'm British born as well. Which is nice, you know? Oh, which is nice. Anyway, it's called Angloga Junction, which mm-hmm. is supposed to be a city, a name of a town where I come from, and a junction is a junction, literally. So, um, I knew that it, this would be interesting a title to give to an album because um, it sounds like you know, a junction, you know, but. Uh, 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 apart from the junction, that word is almost difficult to pronounce. You're either saying Angola and Loga or all yeah. these ones, but yeah, that is where the interest point is for me, and I left it that way there. Because the more it gave people confusion, the more I'm going to be asked what you mean, and mm-hmm. I'm going to use the opportunity to explain and tell a story to, to you know to speak about where we're from. I'm from Angola, and we're spread across the whole of Ghana, and you have a junction, a popular. The, Junction in Kumasi or Serikum, which is called Angola Junction. But to, to name this album this way, it's just a combination of um, of us, everything everything that has inspired my my musical journey over the years. You know, um, from Africa, meeting up at a junction with everything else that I've gained from across the rest of the world. So Angola Junction is where I am at right now. Mm-hmm. You know, musically. Feeding the world. Hey. That's it. Yeah, I thought that I thought that story was so powerful in terms of you're Ghanaian grown, but you've met the rest of the world. Because your features are very diverse yeah. as well. Yeah. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and it yeah. sounds very diverse as well. What's the yeah. okay, past the title then? What's the message behind the whole album? Yeah, the message behind the whole album is just to to match to continue to, you know, bridge the gaps between our sounds. You know, um that's basically what it is. And use that the opportunity, the creative opportunity to promote our uh, culture, our vibes, you know, and make it um, in such a way that everybody can affiliate and relate, you know, yeah, because uh, we have an, a bigger, like a larger number of people also in the diaspora who wish to delve, who wish to know our one, you know, over here in Africa, and also this is an album that they can pick up and still feel the vibes, like they can relate to it anywhere they are, mm. you know, and that cause the sounds actually make it nice. You know, you, 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 when you pick track one to track 15, you feel the diversity, the different sounds, you know, that, that are just like too much. See? Come on. And I see that as well. Different producers, there's producers mm-hmm. from the UK, producers from yeah. Africa, everywhere. What was yeah. it like getting different sounds from Africa, so not just Ghanaian feature artists, because you went around mm-hmm. a little bit. I thought that was really nice. Yeah, yeah. 
that's just the the idea behind the whole album. So I've been taking time to compile, you know, all these records that I do that I, I uh, that are like peculiar. You know, that's how you find thirteen producers on a fifteen track album. Mm. So you can understand that I want the vibe. I wanted the vibe to come from everywhere, you know. And then we got it as well like that. You, you know, got it. Talk to me about some of the people you worked with. What's the chemistry? What's the vibe? What are the how have the relationships been made? <clears throat> um, put, um, I worked with um, Nana Rogue, you know, and yeah. uh, it was beautiful. I was in the studio, you know, as a producer. I work with um, um, the other producers, um, Gazi, Master Gazi, who actually, you know, mastered the whole album as well, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, he produced the track one. Yeah. And then um, 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 Street Beats also produced um, African Party and um, 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 Black Madonna as well. Um, working with them have been, you know, as always, as producers, working with them has always been, they understand when I need a certain... This is what I'm thinking, and this is the type of sound I want to... I mean, um, that I want to hear. Mm. By the time I, I drop the phone in about two or three hours or sometimes a day or two, it sends me something that just interprets my thoughts. So these yes. are people that I love to always have around. Big ups to Beats Dake as well. He produced the, the song Mkuto with um, Kojo Entry. Mm -hmm. And yeah, man, working with the producers is like amazing. It's nice. Anything you need from them, you can holler them and all. And I mean, I record. I recorded a whole album by myself, literally, except those really? that I worked with whilst in the studio. But aside from that, I think majority of the songs I'll be sitting in my studio and I do the recording and all the arrangements. That's hands down by myself, anyway, because um, I had to put that me inside of the song. Some of the things, yeah. you know, yeah. But uh, and then moving on to the fe the featured musicians as well. Yeah. yeah, that's another amazing part of it. Like these are all people who are masters in their game at whatever point they stand and mm. wherever they come from. I start with Nasty C from South Africa. He's dope as a young MC, but he's breaking boundaries. Big, 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 big youth. And I uh, go to Diamond Platinums. We don't need, he don't need no introduction. Mm -hmm. You know, from East Africa, he's proving that, you know, he's actually, you know, broke the whole of the East to the rest of the world the more, you know, irrespective yeah. of the, as as the other artists too, you know, and, um, 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 Jamil is a Jamaican artist, yeah. you know. Yeah. Everybody knows him now. He's a big, big, big artist as well. Uh, I did a collaboration with him on on a song called um, Motion, you know. Yeah, that song was recorded in Jamaica and Ghana, you know, both ways. Yeah. Um, Jamil is a great artist, you know. Bad man Jamil, you know, the great <laughs> man. And then we went on to feature Kojo Entry, the legendary from here, to bless it with his style as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also was, that the, big, was that a um, big moment for you? Had you worked before? Yes, he had featured me on a song before. Okay. Yes, he had featured me on a song before, and that was an honor he, he made me. You know, he did me an honor, and I was grateful to have, you know, the opportunity to work with such a great musician. Look, to date, there are songs that I, 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 I didn't know he sang, mm. but I've loved the songs, and I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. And you, and you find out that Kojo thing has been beyond Ghana years and years and years and years ago. You know, so people like this, they mentor and guide us in different ways, you know, indirectly. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to do a feature with uh, Alakai Harley from the UK. That was a big tune. Yeah, that yeah, was a yeah. Big a lot tune. of people are playing that song here. They love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got to understand. You got to understand. Big tune. Um, yo. I heard Alakai Hailey somewhere on the internet and I and I loved it, you know, so big thing. I I I, I, I can't just yo, that girl, yeah, she's gonna be the biggest, biggest if she's she's dope. I'm telling you, like I I don't know what words to use. I love yeah. her voice when she does the raga when she sings. I think she can even rap or something like that. So I decided to work with her. Like I go for quality over quantity, you know. Mm. Like let's create music that would sink down into the souls of the people so i chose alakai harley and then um um i went on to the almighty kerry hills in america 
How did and that how, how that happened was, was an amazing, was a beautiful one. Yeah. Um, let me just cut the long story short. It goes like a friend of mine called Dusty met up with. I'm gonna post them. You know, like I think I've not posted the lengthy one when Kerry was narrating. She could narrate it better because yeah. she was the one that was met, and then we connected. You know, oh, so was your beautiful. friend met her. A friend of mine met her on a flight. They didn't, he didn't even know that was Kerry when he realized. The conversation just went musical and my name popped in there and then he made the link. But I must say that Kerry is an amazing soul. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. real real human being. You get me? Like, somebody that I admire. I've always respected. Kerry was in his huge. We all know. Yeah. And then get an opportunity to meet her. So my guy sends me her number and then sent, sent me a contact. We, we know we linked via yeah, the yeah, socials yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I, we began talking. And I think we... We made such we, we we had such a chemistry that was dope, you know, right from from the start. And um, I I always go back to say Kerry is a beautiful soul. She's just mm -hmm. amazing. I always go back to say that. I think those characteristics actually made it possible for her to identify the realness in me as well. And then we connected on that basis that level. And, okay. you know, as well. Okay. You know, so I flew to America and then she invited me into her studios. You know, I, I went for like a four city tour somehow. And then we, we recorded the song right there. She had had, um, she had brought uh, Dre Harris, Dre Bombay into the studio all the way from LA. Legendary producer, Grammy award winning and multiple award winning, you know, producer, house producer, Michael Jackson, all of three, you know, and he, the first key he played was what we stuck with. Really? We, it, we got nominated from there. Big ups to Selassie also. He is like my producer. He's a big, he's a musician, big musician, and a producer as well in Atlanta. So anytime I go to Atlanta, my home is his home. So we went together. You know, his part. His, he co-wrote the song as well. We wanted to get the best, the best of it, and which is what we're giving to yeah, you guys. Yeah. So we allowed everybody to to put in some creative juices. You know, we can't be selfish with the music, and that's what we have today. You know, beautiful song. Yeah, a wide range of features. And how do you feel about the UK, UK music? Yeah, UK. UK uh, Alex is not the first artist you've worked with. What's your relationship with the UK scene? Uh look, highly, it's not the first artist I've worked with. Though I've yeah. worked with um, Kojo fans. Kojo I think fans, I've worked yeah. with Gappy Ranks. Gappy Ranks should be my first UK feature. Gappy Ranks yeah. is a is a reggae artist. Big up to Gappy Ranks, Ken Pelpa, any day, any time, <laughs> two thousand and twelve. You know, we kick it out there. Um, same way, big up to Big Nash, same way. Big Nash promotions, you know, from them time there. So that's that's the history I have with UK from our 2012 year. We've been kicking it, doing stuff. I did Kojo fans, and I went on to do Alaka Haile now. I did um, Stylo G. Yeah. That guy as well, Stylo G. I did Bafira remix with Stylo G from 2012. You know, so I've had some quite... Beautiful relationship with the UK. Geographically, as a Ghanaian musician, the day you fly to UK, you know you made it. <laughs> Why so? Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> I mean, to start with, you know, to start with, you know, I want, uh, that's how I feel it is because okay. Ghana and UK, you know, we have the links and a country that's been colonized by the British, you know, are gone. So, you know, once you mm -hmm. skip up from here, once your career takes you out of Accra and land to you inside Heathrow and, you know, you touch base and do a few things, I think that's just how you feel like, yeah, you've arrived. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's nice, man. You said you said very nice stuff about Alaka Harley. Would you mm -hmm. say she's your favorite in the UK or who's... who's... One, top, nah, top. lie. Please, me nah, <laughs> lie. Nah, I'm not going to lie, lie. Big respect to every other person doing their thing. But I will listen to Alakai anytime, any day. And, you know, car member say, in the end, she is a female. There are other bad, bad, bad females, you know. But mm. when Alakai finally gets to the top, yeah? Yeah, man. I know she's, she's, she's climbing up. And where she is is amazing. But even me, everybody in, in life, there's more room for improvement. Mm. So when the light shines brighter and brighter, then you will tell me that I said it. You yes. I mean? Yeah. To, to be Big fair, a lot of us think day. the same. A lot of us think the same. Mm. Alaka Harley, everyone has good stuff to say about her. Honestly, she's a very, very mm -hmm. nice person as well. She keeps it real, keeps yeah, it man. Very, very. That's my G. That's yeah, my see, G. I like you. You've got such 
experience in terms of all the people you worked with. We haven't even said Vinnie Man yet. Do you know, there's so I've many. Said Sean Paul, Sean Paul, Sean Paul, Paul yeah. <laughs> Sean, there's a lot we haven't oh. said, but what, hey, do find, lots, lots, lots of artists. what do you find you learn from collaborating? Or what's the biggest lessons you've learned from a particular artist? Um, Are you admitted that freeze or? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No, you didn't freeze. That was clear. Uh, what I particularly learned from collaborations, right? That's what you asked. Right? Yeah. Or if there's exactly. a particular lesson yeah. that a particular artist taught you. That's both. I, I've had both experiences. You know, I've had both experiences okay. in that. Um, if you want to, if you want to learn and you want to know, you are, if you want to know more, you have to open up to learn. That's what I want mm -hmm. to say. Uh -huh. You have to open up to learn, and I've learned a lot from, especially some of the big, big artists that I've featured and worked with. Their work ethics, the the way they they they've kept themselves over this number of years, you know, to still be relevant. These are the things I learn. You know, I don't only learn from the musical composition or the recording or the delivery. Mm. I I even learn more from the other things that are not directly related to the music. You know those things do guide me a lot and collaborations i think help because um, it builds your confidence as well it, it tests your voice with other voices musically mm. and so in the end you find out that your voice now you can be able to fit your voice almost everywhere when you've done some of the some collaborations like yeah that's like magic your voice finally gets to sync with other voices, you know, so that is what collaboration actually helps to do. It's really important to open up to collaborate, you know, and if you love the song, if you love the sound, go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. That's how I, 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 I see collaborations. So I don't run away from collapse. Uh, I, I, you know, I love to even chase it, people, yeah. you know, chase it, help people sometimes, you know, is that's just how it is, you know? You just be real to the music, and the music will be real to you. Slightly away from the music now, obviously around the world, yeah. we're seeing a big Black Lives Matter movement, a push from many countries engaging. They say it's the biggest since the civil rights movement. Being from Ghana and seeing your fellow people in the diaspora around the world and how they've been suffering, what's your view on the current Black Lives Matter movement and what you've been viewing in the world? Um, this is a thing that has come to us all. We all are seeing what is going on, except you don't have a phone, except you can't see, you don't watch the news. But mm -hmm. Black Lives actually do matter, you know? And Black Lives have, has always been in, in danger, like endangered, you know, from time, time, time till date, you know? You can, when you watch, you could go on YouTube when you check out Goodbye Uncle Tom, 1971, American version. You see, you see, uh, these things have been with us from time, mm -hmm. from day, from slavery, from all these ones, you know. And I would not only say that they are suffering because you made a statement. We are all suffering. Mm -hmm. Black people are suffering. If one black man suffer, all black people suffer. Mm -hmm. If one white man suffer, all white people suffer. So we have to stand up for, you know, we all cannot go extinct in a day. We all cannot die within one day, you know. So if somebody is hurt or somebody is dead, you should feel, feel it and, and know that, yeah, it hurts. And we should find ways and ways to deal with it. I think the topic of racism is, is, is not a new thing. The topic mm -hmm. of racism against black people and people of color is now out of hand. It's getting out of hands now, you know, and it's gotten out of hands from a long time till now. That's how I should say. And at every point, we, we try to write, raise our voices as black people and people of color to, you know, to shake the world and make them know we're feeling the pain. Mm -hmm. So this is another show of pain, feeling the pain. And it's left for things to change so that we will be healed. You yeah. Know? Yeah. We're feeling the pain and that's what I can say. So 
big ups to everybody that is adding their voices, their platforms to voices out. But it takes more than just posting on Instagram. It takes more than posting on Twitter. It takes more than even walking in the streets, which is all important, mm -hmm. you know. You know, but the change um, in, 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 in all these places, we have to find out the root cause of these things and see how to, to, to undo them, you know, as people. But first and foremost, I believe that we have to check inside of ourselves because it's, a, it's racism. There's, there's several, several forms of racism. But the racism that starts with black man on a black man is what we have to kill first and foremost, fundamentally. Then all of us can take it to the next level, you know. Be more united. Because, yeah, because that's really important. We need that unity. Imagine the whole Africa tomorrow. You hear the United States of Africa, and we start doing things in unison. Don't you think that that will be able to affect the whole world, and even the black people in the diaspora, and how things are done, mm -hmm. on how this process is on, and how all this systematic racism and all these things, it will be able to 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 curb it because. Africa has fed the world. Africa is home to everybody. But even us at home, as countries, as people, we are divided, you know. So no matter what, it will be very difficult. You don't expect the people abroad or the black people in the diaspora. The unity of black people in the, the diaspora, right, or the togetherness of the black people in the, the, the diaspora is important. Mm -hmm. But I think that, that we rely on the unity of black people on the continent, you mm -hmm. know? Like I'm saying, we need to just get together, be strong. I think these are the things that would. It's not easy, talk is cheap, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but if the whole of Africa can be one, not one as in only in unity, politically, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, all these, all these other aspects, because we love one another already. There's unity, yeah. there's love at heart. But the systems have broken us into pieces. So if we can fix the African systems and come together as a united nation, mm -hmm. as, as, a uni as, as, like as, as, as a united Africa one, things will change. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, other than that, we will just be doing all these ones in bits and pieces. So we need to be united at home first. Is what you're saying. That's what I believe, man. Okay. But every other thing going on, that's the way. We have to we have to voice out, we have to cry out. You know? mm -hmm. I've got lots of questions from fans. There's a lot in the boxes as well. I'm gonna get to yeah. some of them quickly, but before then, whilst I find the question, how important is ownership? Cause I know you've got your own label set up. I believe mm. you've got the CEO as well. How important is mm. owning your stuff? Um, you know, oh, Ownership is, is, if you own something, then you have the rights to it. If you own something, then you must have created it. So if you are a creator of your content, then you must own it, which, which is right as a musician. Done. Mm. That's how simple I can describe ownership. You know? Yeah. If I, if, if I, because I produce this T-shirt, like Life is a Journey T-shirt, right? Mm -hmm. as part of the merchandise for the album and you know i produced it so it's mine i have to own it how, how should i do this and bring it to you and be like you're the owner mm -mm -mm. you know what i mean so that's just basically what it is it's very important to be the owner of what you create if you don't create it it's all right don't go stealing other people's things don't go be owner of other people's stuff you know okay um, let me get to the fan questions. I put on my Instagram before. A lot of people are asking, you and Shatter, are we going to get collaboration? Yeah, man. And I've been answering, like, not once, not twice. There must be a collaboration in the end. Mm. So we're just waiting on the right time when things fix. Then they're going to get it. Okay. Let's get to the questions. What's your favorite on the album? Favorite song, I believe. Uh, man, try and be say I'll be lazy in the night of his security for day of his lazy. Man, try and see the body know the power simulating I go do for a better day. He be the work, work, work. The song is called Journey. <clears throat> and, uh, and another one favorite of mine, mm -hmm. I think it's, my, it's been my favorite this week. I wanna let you know you'll be my only love. Yeah. I wanna let you know you'll be my only love. And I need you with me, right? Anytime, 
When I see your fire, fire face in my head. That song is bad. Only love. <laughs> Crazy. Produced by N to the A. London thing. You get me? My okay. <laughs> nice. Someone said, we need a feature with Stormzy. Yeah, man. So reach out. Talk Stormzy. Talk Stormboy. Let him know. Say, yeah, man. Things, <laughs> things have to happen. And I know when he's in the right space, you know, we're going to do it because there's a lot of things, a lot of things that, you know, label plans, individual plans, artist plan, clearances, releases. These are all structured in these times. So, you know, when, I don't mind. How do you balance work and life? Someone said. Um, work and life. I mean, um, what I do is that I understand that work, we had life before work. So I just make sure that life takes the lead. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. Yeah, I just make sure life takes the lead and that's it. Someone, another person asked, coffee. What do you think of coffee? Coffee is a big, I mean, is is a great artist, you know, she broke into prominence, you know, not quite too long. But I have my favorite as well. I have my other big, big favorite, you know, you know. Who, who you your favorite? Coffee. Uh, on coffee's levels, I think Lila Ike is my favorite. Okay. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. Big up to coffee any day. Met her in Jamaica one time, you know, somewhere in March. She's a great, great, great artist. I'm not going to take that from her. But one of my favorite, favorite, favorite is coffee. Hey, one yeah. of my favorite, favorite is Lila Aiki. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. I think my favorite as well. Concerts at home. Do you see it? Yeah. So do, I, do I have plans to do a concert, you know, as I'm out with composers? Um, a Shaman to the World is one of my brainchilds that I is a is a is a is a, is a, is a is an outdoor event, one of the biggest outdoor events in Ghana, you know, arguably in West Africa as well. The last year we had like mm -hmm. the numbers said almost a hundred thousand people came at the concert. Wow. It was a huge, you know, it's a free concert that I do in my city, a Shaman. That's the same place where my shop is placed at, the beam shop, you know, like when. I am a real definition of a put on for my city. You get me? Yeah. So, yeah, man, you find these things. And I do that show as well. They're asking if I could put the composers on the next there. one. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? This is a concert for the people. And we have plans. We have big plans to, 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 to just, you know what I mean? We have big plans. But, you know, we know what, what it takes to make these things happen. So it's just a matter of time. And I ask for more time and patience and support from okay. the masses because it's a free event anyway so you can imagine yeah yeah putting it together okay mm. someone's asked before on when i put up on my instagram your thoughts on nigerian artists who are your favorite what are your favorite songs coming out of nigeria um you said my favorite songs coming out of nigeria i'm a big fan of two-face you know so mm. any day any time I think I've listened to more Two Face. You know, Two Face is my 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 don. You know, I, I you know, he's from the old school still. Aside that is David. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, man. And 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 and, 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 and the list goes on. Zlatan, all them there. You know, yeah, yeah man. A lot of people. A lot of people just want you, they're asking about all these collaborations because they know you deliver. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man, and it's because of that they give me a lot of support as well. So um, yeah. they say, when is the Rihanna color? You know, the Rihanna one is like, woo! That's yeah. like I can't wait. My, I can't wait for that myself. So we keep praying and we keep we keep making a know that yes, we have to. Mm. You know, I believe it's gonna come soon. Okay, let me see. I've got lots of comment questions in here, but some of them are small. All right, how do you balance? music how do you balance traveling a lot someone's basically said uh most of it when i travel it's uh, it's for the work yeah so sometimes it feels like you're in accra one day you're in uk the next day you're in america the next day yo it's crazy you only sleep on a flight while mm -hmm. there to do the work it be the work or it be the work anywhere the work day be there we know <laughs> we're going to come sharp like a look or two 
Don't play me, mami mi sika e ntwa mi chobo na on the seminar I'm daddy my team if you toy e pon pon no e ju mama pa ni koko. Say na nya mi channel no and na maji mi oh no yeah. Abi asana mi be so mi bobo mi siko jo me nsu we ji money for the koko na ma capture mi show the one side I alolo. E ju ma be bobo be tell me show to. Stove boy, stove boy. It's a work man, it's a work. Where's your favorite you know? your favorite places around the world? Africa. Really? Home? Outside, <laughs> outside of Africa. Outside of Africa. Your favorite places that you travel to? Jamaica, Mauritius. Okay. Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> did you hear that though? Did you, did you hear that? I don't want to scream it. Yeah. But I might change my mind tomorrow. You feel me? So that's <laughs> why I'm, I'm, I'm not even screaming it out. You know? But, you know, Africa, Jamaica. Anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear Mauritius yeah. as well. And is that, yeah, that, Mauritius. Does that include the shows that you do? In terms of performing, is that the same? Your I favorite see. places to perform? Ah, uh, Jamaica is one of the tough. Jamaica is one of the toughest places to perform, though. You have what? to have it. To, Jamaica is one of the toughest places to perform. You have to have it to step on on a stage in Jamaica. And Reggae Sunfest 2018 was crazy. Mm. We kicked it. Uh, we came out as the top. We came out among the top ten performers. Nice at Reggae Sunfest, and I'm yeah, so uh, irrespective of, 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 of the tough crowd because they know too much, it's one of my favorite places to perform. Mauritius, as well, I did an event over there, big one, they're cool, uh, they're cool, like somewhere in 2016. Mm -hmm. So, I think all these places I've, I've been that could be my favorite places, I've done shows over there as well, done shows in Switzerland. Yeah, what's it, what's all, what's it like it, in Europe when you see the diaspora in Europe? come out for the music yeah man nothing because last the last time i told europe was um i think uh um is it 2019 my european tour was crazy i did ratatom i did a couple i did reggae jam you know and when i see the diaspora come out for the sound it, it just encourages me and tells me that yes this is what it is this is this is the right decision i made to to fuse afrobeat and dance out so then i'm able to touch any stage any place and sometimes the most difficult ends is where I shake up the most because really? you know, you know we have some cities that are like you know you have to be tough to be able to shake the whole place. But the tougher the city, the easier the shake. Not to mm -hmm. brag, but uh, you know, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. So earlier on, before that's you came, happens. A lot of people were saying, "What's BIM? What's BIM? BIM Nation? How can you describe what is BIM? BIM Nation?" Yeah. <laughs> BIM is the only only music nation in the world, you know, right now, you know. Yeah, BIM is the only music nation. It's it's a, it's it's a, it, it's it's a, it, it, how do I say this? How do you say it's, it? It is a. I don't want to say fans, but yeah, for lack of a better word, it's a fans nation. You feel me? It's my nation. They say BIM, you know, say blesses imperial majesty, you know. So it's BIM B H I M, you know, and. The fans worldwide, they form BIM. They make BIM, you know? The nation, they make the BIM nation. I'm the BIM nation president. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, my BIM nation stands for everything. Support, music, loyalty, high morals, dignity, principle, you know? Like everything. So that's my nation. So if you love Stone Boy and you support good music and you support... You know, you support everything positive. You're a conscious black African. You know yourself and you're just a beam native, you know. Because members of France that I encounter actually prove to me that, yes, we understand the journey. Mm. And this is where I go. And, you know, just making sure the youth get the right direction. Because I'm a youth. So we all join hands together to tow the right line with the music. See? Okay. So, bro. All right. That's. I feel that's that's a good enough explanation for people that are mm -hmm. asking. We're almost coming close. I know times pushed you. I've got to go and stuff. But before you go, what advice would you give to first of all young artists, and advice to people in general about going to the next level in their life? So, young artists, bro, the next level. Thank you, man. Um, this that I'm going to say is a thing that I tell myself, you know. I'm far from where I used to be, very, very far from where I used to be, but I'm not where I want to be yet. 
So this these things inspire me as well. We just have to keep focus, keep focus, keep focus. You know, persevere and dedicate our lives to the thing and endure because the journey is not has never been easy. You're gonna have a lot of people tear you down. Those that are gonna tear you down are even gonna be the people that are closest to you that are supposed to push you up. Mm. You know what I mean? So keep your eyes on the road, you know, and you find out that you get some of the biggest supports from strangers that you never know. So that means that whatever you're doing, just do it right because you don't know who's watching. You don't know who's going to come out to support you, you know. So this is what I've done, you know. I keep my grind. I believe in God ultimately, mm -hmm. and I pray, pray to him for directions, and I study the times, and I study the seasons and the moment, make my move. I strike when the iron is hot. Nice. Anytime, any day. See? Yeah. Yeah, man. Facts. Thank you very, very much. Everyone in the comments, I got through as many questions as I could. Drop your claps in the comments for me. Bib Nation to yeah, the world. Yeah, to the world. I see a lot too, you know. I see a lot too. I see a big yeah. HQ. All of the Bib Natives, you know. I, I, I see so many names if I want to mention, bro. Yeah, a lot. I, 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 yeah, so big ups to the Bib Nation, the, the whole family, the Bib Bean, Bean family, boy family, Bernitan family, God family, you know. The mm. nation has families, you know. So they know what I'm talking about. And the, and the sects that we've been, do you know, the Bean Boss, Bean Boss Empresses, you know, Bean, yeah, Bean yeah. Press. That, yo, let a, yo, the nation is huge, all you know. And that's all I can say. Thank you for supporting yeah. the album, Anglaga Junction. Well, I'm there. If you don't have it, if you want to keep one, the whole of Ghana has it. Go yeah. through every shell shop. Keep it as a souvenir, you know. I know it's all about the online things, yeah. But when you pick this CD, you know, you have a souvenir at home. You can hang it on your wall. You can do mm. something with it, you feel me? And as time passes, you still have something to hold. hold you on. can grab a T-shirt, you know what I mean? So go check out The Beam Shop at The Beam Shop. Okay. Get your orders. Yo, all of my London fans, get your orders going to get a T represent for the brand. It's Beam Nation to the world. Get on YouTube, go check out the new videos called Leg Bag Bear. seconds. <laughs> you know how the thing goes, my thing, yeah? Thank you yes. very much, though, boy. Thank you.